Okay, let's go back to our top story, those elections in Iran. We're joined by Mohsen Milani. He joins me from Tampa. He's the executive director of the Center for Strategic and Diplomatic Studies at the University of South Florida. Many thanks for joining us, Mohsen. Thank you for having me. Can the reformists of Rouhani win these elections? I'm sorry, I, I did not hear the question. Can the reformists of Rouhani win these elections? Well, uh, based on the uh, vetting process by the powerful Guardian Council, a good number of reformists were eliminated. However, a, a large number of uh, pragmatist uh, individuals who are very close to the president as well as the Ayatollah Hashemi Rafsanjani are in the, uh, in the election. And if they can uh, score a decisive victory, that would be very good uh, for the government, that would be very good for Mr. Rouhani. However, this is not a referendum about Mr. Rouhani. This is about uh, the succession process, uh, and it is about the Iranian parliament. The Iranian parliament is quite powerful, but it cannot have the kind of influence a lot of people think it can have on, on the government. It can create problems for the government, but if uh, Rouhani can have a kinder, gentler uh, majlis or parliament, it would make it much easier for him to open up the economic system inside Iran and, more importantly, to moderate Iranian foreign policy and accelerate the process of rapprochement with the Western uh, powers. When people are voting, what are they going to be focusing on? Is it the domestic matters or is it Iran's relationship with the outside world uh, and that nuclear deal that we've seen? What, it, what is top in their minds? I think it depends on what a segment of the Iranian society you're talking about. Uh, if you pay attention to the campaigning process, you'll see that foreign policy what really was not discussed that much. For example, the sensitive issue of the civil war in Syria was hardly discussed by the candidates. However, everyone in Iran knows that a victory for pragmatists, a victory for those who are close to the reformists and to the, uh, to the president and to Hashemi Yadaksanjani would mean a more open Iranian society and a victory by the opponents of these individuals would mean the maintenance of the status quo. Uh, we've been hearing that there is a, a big turnout. Why is a big turnout so important? Who will benefit from that? Well, if you look at the Middle East today, the broader Middle East today, you would see a number of civil wars in Iraq, in Syria, in, in uh, Libya. You see a number of failed states. You would see the rise of jihadists. And in good number of Middle Eastern countries, many of whom are Western allies, you don't even have elections. And yet, in Iran, we are going to have the 10th uninterrupted election for the Iranian parliament. Since 1979, we've had 10 uninterrupted elections for the parliament, including during the eight years of the bloody war with Iraq. That says a lot about the stability of the Islamic Republic of Iran. A higher voter turnout, and I think it's going to be somewhere between 63 to 70 percent would mean that uh, the people of Iran have concluded, rightly so, that despite their disagreements with the government, elections is the only uh, way to resolve political conflict. Uh, without elections, you can have, of course, democracy. But just because you have elections doesn't mean you have democracy. I'm very happy that at least the institution of elections have been institutionalized in Iran and despite all the flaws in the nominating process, despite the intervention by the Guardian Council, which is quite undemocratic, we do have elections, we do have competitive elections, and somewhere between 65 to 70 percent of the eligible Iranian voters, which is a number much higher than the voter turnout in some of the most mature democracies in the West, I think this is a good day for transparency, a good day for for opening up the Iranian society even more. Okay, Mohsen, really good to speak to you. Mohsen Milani joining us there from Tampa, Executive Director for the Center for Strategic and Diplomatic Studies at the University of South Florida.